All right. Well, let's look at Psalms uh, 28 today. I know they, I know really Ed already covered Psalms 28, but since I put it through here, I figured well we got to hit it because at least he did not do my final slide as we always have of running through every word of the chapter. Amen. And so since uh, really Psalms uh, 28 is kind of a Reader's Digest version of Psalms 18. And if you remember Psalms 18, Psalms 18 was an edited down version that David had prepared for the course, the choir to sing there in the sanctuary services of his victories over his enemies as we read in 2 Samuel 22. It's the same uh, song with just a few little changes here and there as, uh, of course, he would have every right to make little slight modifications. And uh, as it was prepared for a congregation to sing, amen, or a choir, or whatever. And so in some ways, you could say that Psalms 28 is like the Reader's Digest version of uh, Psalms 18. And it's really, uh, 29 is a continuation of what's said in 28. And when you actually count the numbers of the verses, there would have been a total of uh, 20. Uh, because there's 9 and 28, and then there's 11 and 29. And so those together would make a total of 10. Uh, I mean, 10 or, or, or 20 totals. So uh, that's a little bit of what's going on with Psalms 28 and 29. And um, so... Again, it is kind of a rehash of what was said back in Psalms 18. Uh, but basically, as we have see with Psalm 28 itself, it's a prayer uh, showing us how to get our prayers answered. Amen? Certainly Jonah got his prayers answered. Amen? <laughs> He said, out of the belly of hell cried I over there in the book of Jonah. And buddy, hallelujah, God had that old whale seminary he went through and spit him out on to the ground. And of course, that was quite an experience. I'm sure it was quite an interesting ride for him. Amen. And so that's kind of the theme I wanted to pick up on with this cry to the Lord. Uh, unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock, be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Now again, too, you got to remember in the Old Testament now, they didn't have an assurance of their salvation like we have. Uh, praise the Lord, we have the sure mercies of David that David did have. David's the only guy in the Old Testament that did have God's sure mercies. But he didn't know it. He didn't rec He didn't fully understand what all God was doing with him and why he was so unique to have that. Um, so, he says some things on occasion because as a man in the Old Testament, looking to God for His assurance of salvation. Amen? Uh, they didn't have the Holy Ghost indwelling them like we have with a circumcision made without hands, which is, of course, what Colossians chapter 2, verse 11 talks about. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so, it's interesting that in this chapter, uh, he references that in verse 5, which we'll get to there in a minute. Amen. He said, uh, cry out to God to trust, to, to hear you now and not turn a deaf ear to you. Amen. Mm -hmm. And certainly when we think of Jonah crying out from the whale, uh, 
it had to be something else. And of course they say that, you know, that killer shark, they've had sailors go overboard and they've been swallowed down by those killer sharks and they've been able to, huh? Killer whale, I mean, I say shark. <laughs> killer whale, and they, they men have been able to climb up in their nas nostril cavity and stay alive. And, and so we're not sure how in the world Jonah had to go through what he had to go through. Of course, I believe the Bible, and I believe he was 100% dead when he was swallowed down by the whale. But he was doing some praying from within that whale. And though he was taken down to the bars of hell. Now it's interesting that the Jews say this is actually Jonah the first time he died. was He's the, Sh he's the uh, Shunammite woman's son that, that Elisha raised from the dead. That's just the Jews' tradition. That's what the Jewish rabbis would teach. That's what they taught their people to believe. Now, we don't go by Jewish fables, right. but it is an interesting idea right. that maybe the first time he died, he would have died and went to paradise as a little boy and brought back from the dead. Then here he would have died and went to hell, which he said he did, and I believe him. I never call him a liar. <laughs> uh, and yet, in the end, God is going to raise him up, and yet he'll die of old age in Nineveh. Now again, what's so interesting is you can watch the t watch internet and watch YouTube all day, and there's so much BS and garbage on there. It's sad and sickening, but everybody thinks they're really got something to say. You know that narcissism, I guess, of every man. Right. Somehow everybody thinks uh, he's endowed with some kind of special light, and there's so much garbage. I've seen a guy talking about some of these things lately, and it was so sad. And I had to make a comment. No, the tell of Jonah is still in Nineveh. They're in that land. They know exactly where they buried Jonah because he stayed there till he died. And that's why I say the greatest proof that Jonah really did repent and got right with God is the fact that he stayed there. Because again, he had such a hatred for those people. Right. If he hadn't really changed, he would have jumped on a ship and went back home. <laughs> But he didn't. He stayed right there. That's proof that I believe he wrote the book of Jonah. And uh, he stayed right there. And he died there. Because the people of Nineveh honored him and died. And they, 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 they to this day, honor that Jonah came there and brought them the good news. And uh, he stayed there and died there. And he was buried there. So, um, so you can be sure that third time that he died, <laughs> he died right with God so he could go on to paradise, amen? <laughs> and he'd be shut up until faith could come, amen? Like the Bible says in Galatians. And so, uh, hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward Thy holy oracle. The oracle is that place uh, that is the speaking place. In the whole book of Psalms, this is the only place the oracle pops up. And uh, if a man speaks, the Bible says that him speak as the oracles of God. Amen. Right. As the oracle of God. So when we speak, we should speak for God and Know our scriptures to be able to quote God. Amen. Draw me not uh, away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity which speak peace to their neighbors, uh, but mischief is in their hearts. So again, we've kind of got an alliteration going again. We see in 1 and 2, uh, there's a, a prayer. Uh, we see in 1 and 2, uh, we see... Uh, He's praying for an audience. He's praying in verse 3 for dis dis discrimination. Uh, and then we see he talks about his enemies in 4 and 5. So first there's the first three verses of prayer. 
In 4 and 5, there's an imprecation to the enemies. And then in verses 6, 7, and 8, we see praise. And then there's a, the imprecation of his enemies again in last in verse 9. So we see that, again, this is where, what you see this poetry in the Bible, you can't miss it. It's as clear as a nose on your face. Um, so he addresses the enemies in verses 4 and 5. Give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them after the work of their hands. Render to them their dessert. Now, isn't that cute? I, I thought that was so interesting to see that word dessert uh, in the Bible. Amen. Because they deserve some things and they're going to get some things what they rightly deserve. Amen. <laughs> After you've eaten your peas and mashed potatoes, do you get some dessert? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yes. And look, so like the three Hebrew children got thrown in the fire. I mean, imagine what that had to be. Amen. You ask God to deal with you justly. Amen. Amen. And praise the Lord. Uh, he showed up. Amen. The, ro the fire burnt the ropes off of their bodies. But it didn't cut, touch their clothes. And they didn't even smell of smoke or nothing. Mm -hmm. The Bible says. Yeah. And the Lord was in there visiting with them. Wasn't that awesome? Right. Yeah. He's able. And for every Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego they spared, God allowed thousands to die. You can't always think that I'm going to be that one that's going to be spared because you have no guarantees. <laughs> but God is able. He's still God. And so, um, verse 5, so, because they regard not the works of the Lord nor the operation of His hands. Now, Colossians 2.11 tells us what the operation of His hand is. The thing that the Lord could reach down and do an invisible work, an operation of God made without hands and cut us free from our flesh. Now, I think that's what everybody experienced when they get saved. I saw Brother Keith before church hall. I was listening to these people tell their story. This wonderful Mormon family. This man was a high priest in the Mormon church. He'd been in for 30 years. He tells his story how his name is Mike Wilder. He tells how he's raised Baptist, but yet, you know, he never took anything too serious, never did get baptized. And so when the Mormons knocked on his door, him and his young wife in their 20s, and they said something to him about, well, we're the... Church of the Latter Day Saints. That well, they heard about the Latter Days, and they thought, well, this might, this kind of has, that's kind of Bible. I mean, uh, so they got suckered into that cult. And they went into a hundred percent, you know, because they're just barely able to make a living and get by, living in Indiana at the time, and uh, you know, kids come along and. They were trying to support a little orphan child. And the Mormon church demanded 100% all their tithes, you know. So they had to quit supporting the little poor orphans and gave all their money to that cult, you know. And right away they got them involved in everything, you know, and got them in. So, that, man, they barely got time to even be at home and do anything at home because they're so busy. So one of that giveaways that you're in a cult is when you ain't even got no time to do nothing with your family. Right. It's sad to me that I see this creeping in more and more to even Bible-believing churches because, uh, you know, they somehow think everything has to be under somebody's control and it doesn't have to be under anybody's control but the Lord's. Mm -hmm. There's no liberty. And uh, so it was so great to hear how they finally got saved because their youngest son was doing his missionary work in Florida and they thought they'd go in and visit this Baptist church and they thought they could set up a meeting with Pastor Bennett and come back a few days later and talk to him privately and 
And he challenged him to just take the Bible and read it as, as simply a, a, as a child would read it. Don't read into it what you want it to be. That's what you've been brainwashed to think about what the Mormons have told you in the Pearl of Great Price and the mm -hmm. covenants and doctrines and all these other junk they've got. It's religion trying to prove by their good works that they're worthy to be saved. And sure enough, their youngest son, you know, finally got, he'd gotten saved on his own and he went home just challenged his mom and dad to do the same, just read the Bible. Mm -hmm. Huh? Just read the Bible like a little child. Amen. As if it means what it says, which of course they neglected it for centuries, <laughs> because for years, because you know they were told that well, even they said within the church they constantly downplay the Bible. Oh yeah, they say the the Bible and the Books of Mormon are right. same, but they're really not because they emphasize everything about there and nothing to do with this. So uh, so eventually, you know, and his mom who was teaching at Brigham Young University, she got saved. And uh, eventually the whole family got saved and got out of that cult, and that's great. Mm -hmm. And now his mom, even being a Ph.D., she's written a book kind of telling her story, and there's all kinds of Mormons across the world are getting saved and leaving the Mormon church mm -hmm. because of this one family mm -hmm. and their testimony. Because God saved them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when God reaches down in your heart and He cuts you free from your flesh, it's quite an emotional experience what the Bible calls being born Amen. again. Mm -hmm. And they talked about being born again. Mm -hmm. And once you've been born again, now you're born again. Mm -hmm. you know, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. How could you say, you know, you've been born again and yet you're not so sure about it? You know, mm -hmm. if it's happened to you, you know it. But if it hasn't happened to you, you know, you, you won't know it then, will you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's just wonderful. Because uh, I got to hear what well, this kid had interviewed the dad, and I went ahead and listened to the mom tell her story, then I went ahead and listened to the son, Micah, tell his story. And uh, and it's just wonderful to see how God's still in the same business, you know. And, uh, and there's a work that he does in the work of a believer in the New Testament times that is uh, just, you can't deny it, because now it's, it's true. Now, see, when I got saved, here's what happens. According to Colossians chapter 2, mm -hmm. God reached down. Now, I didn't see this happen. Right. I was just nine years old myself. But when I called on the Lord and asked Him to save me, because mm -hmm. I was kneeling there at my mama's bedside, the Lord reached down in whom also ye are circumcised with the circ circumcision made without hands. No man laid a hold of me and cut extra flesh away right. from my privates. Right. But the Lord reached down into my heart and cut me free from my flesh. And it was an invisible operation of God. In the putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. Now right there it is where Paul is picking up on what David said here in Colossians 2.28, I mean in 28.5, nor the operation of his hands, see. See, when you get saved, the Lord reaches down and just like the Lord raised up Jesus from the dead. Yes. Yes, sir. Verse 13. And you being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh. Mm -hmm. Hath he quickened together with him. Having forgiven you all trespasses. Mm -hmm. I like the way I heard a guy say it one time. He talked about how he went in the locker room and he got on his knees. And how he got saved, he said, and the Lord reached down and he touched me and I died. Mm -hmm. Then he raised me from the dead. <laughs> yes. And that's exactly what happened to you when you got saved. That's right. mm -hmm. 
the old you died and the new you was born again come alive by in the spirit for the first time you were quickened together with him and all your trespasses are forgiven you ain't got nothing to worry about burning in no lake of fire like Joey Faust teaches paying for your own sins after you got saved no there ain't nothing to worry about no more Jesus took care of all of it because all your sins were future when Jesus died. <laughs> yes, that's right. And it's definitely the operation of God. Yes. And of course, I believe he uses that word of God as a scalpel. Because he says it's a sharp two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. Amen. It's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart there in Hebrews 4, 12 and 13. So... Yeah. So hallelujah, we have this New Testament experience of God's operation by His hand. Amen? He shall destroy them and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord, verse 6 says. So now we get to the praise section. Blessed be the Lord because He hath heard the voice of my supplications. Amen. 7 and 8. The Lord is my strength and my shield. The Lord, uh, my heart trusteth in him. I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. With my song will I praise him. Amen. And so, if you love the Lord, you have a song. That's right, And in fact, Mrs. Wilder said something to that effect. She said something to the effect that she was in awe of God because she said my kids couldn't carry a tune in a bucket but when they got saved now they can sing hmm. Amen. <laughs> Amen. and well that makes sense it should be that way because I mean, yeah. you should have a song yes, sir. and that's what David said here <laughs> and uh, I, it, it, it's kind of unheard of somebody says they're saved but they don't have a song well there's something wrong here they should be singing all the time, even if it is off key. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the truth is, if you listen to the birds, all the animals sing, and they do, and you look at the piano, find it, you'll find it's in a minor key. They're always singing in a minor key. But they'll sing in a major key someday when the Lord comes back. Amen. So we need to praise the Lord when He answers our prayers. Amen. Because he is our strength and shield. Certainly no one his family did when they come off the ark. They sure set us a beautiful example, didn't they? Because you trust in him and he's helped you because he's the strength of his people and the security of salvation for his anointed followers. Amen. And so we see it's laid out here. The Lord is our strength. He's the saving strength of His anointed. Amen. And then lastly but not leastly, pray for God's safety, care, and guidance for all His people. Now I th was thinking of when Paul and Barnabas, they laid hands on them, but the Bible says the book of Acts did, the church did, and sent him out. Amen. And certainly uh, we should pray for God's safety, care, and guidance for all of His people. Yeah. Save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up forever. Amen. And so, certainly, um, we need to, intercede for people in our prayers. And ask the Lord to feed them like he said he would in Psalms 23. Amen. And so this is the, our breakdown then of the <laughs> of the chapter. <laughs> Unto thee. 591 times it's in the Bible. Will I cry four times? O Lord, 353 times. My rock, 12 times it's in the Bible. Be not, 186 times. Silent, nine times. To me, 184 times. Less, 240 times. If thou be 23 times, I become one time. 
like them six times that go down 19 times into the pit 14 times hear the voice eight times of my supplication six times when I cry five times cry unto thee eight times when I 226 times lift up my eight times lift up my hands two times Toward thy four times holy, 611 times. Oracle, 17 times in the Bible. Draw, 76 times. Draw me, two times. Not away, 18 times. With the wicked, 10 times. And with 380 times the workers, 19 times of iniquity, 29 times. Which speak five times. Speak peace three times. To their 171 times neighbors, 21 times. Mischief, 47 times, is in their 12 times. Their hearts, 34 times. Give them 63 times according to their 91 times, according to their deeds, 3 times. According to thee, 327 times. Wickedness, 127 times in the Bible. Of their 510 times endeavors, 1 time. Isn't that amazing? Endeavors is only the Bible one time, and you're looking at it. That, that's just amazing to me. <laughs> Give them 63 times after the work, three times of their hand, 17 times. Render. Of course, I think of rendering fat. Amen. Render 33 times to them, 224 times. Them there. 23 times. Desert. 42 times is in the Bible. Desert. <laughs> Somebody must have liked their dessert. Because they, 156 times, regard not six times the works of the Lord. Seven times in the Bible. Nor thee, 52 times operation, three times of his hands, 15 times. He shall destroy five times, destroy them forty-two times. Not build ten times, them up sixty-four times. Blessed be the Lord twenty-nine times, because he hath heard two times. The voice, two hundred and three times, is his strength nine times. My shield four times, my heart eighty-four times. Trusted in him two times. I am seven hundred and forty-two times. Helped. 24 times, greatly, 87 times, rejoiceth 18 times, with my, 74 times, my song, three times it's in the Bible, my song, will I praise seven times in the Bible, <laughs> amen, praise him 22 times, is their strength four times. He is the 35 times. Saving strength two times. His anointed nine times. Save thy, save thy seven times in the Bible. Boy, there's a sermon waiting for somebody to preach. Yeah. Save thy people two times. Bless 127 times. Thy people 129 times. Thine inheritance 17 times. Feed them 14 times. Also, and 11, 118 times. Lift them up three times forever, 290 times. Now, I think I mentioned in a real sense uh, 28 and 29 really kind of go together because 29 just kind of picks up really where 28 left off. Uh, because of what's said here in 28, 7. The Lord is thy strength and my shield. My heart trusteth in him. I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices. And with my song will I praise him. So in the fulfillment of the promise of verse 7. Now we pick up 29. Given to the Lord. Amen. Okay. So, 
寝ないで。Magnify, Amen, the eternal King, Amen. The Lord Almighty, Hallelujah. Psalm 29. His people's praise of God's glory and creation. So, similar to 28 following up on 18, well, 29 is kind of following up on Psalms 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, the firmament shows the same word. Night and the night show its speech, and day and the day show its knowledge. Amen. And so、uh, we read, Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Now, you know, who would that be? But, huh? Well, of course, of course it, it, we could say it's the Lord, but of course, we, we think that this may be a term talking about the angels, because the angels are mighty, powerful people. And when they pop up, they're definitely. Man's a little lower than the angels because t h e m them guys have power. <laughs> they sure can wipe out a lot of e n e m y And so it's believed that David's referencing、uh, the angels here. Or the, and I, I say the heavenly host for sure, amen? So that's my point. Call the heavenly host and、uh, people to worship the Lord and Him alone, amen? All the heavenly hosts the seraphim, the cherubim, the angels. Because all of them are mighty. Honor his glory and strength. Honor him for the glory due his name. Worship him alone in the splendor of his holiness. Amen. And so we see the praise is promised in the first two verses, and the praise is rendered in、uh, verses 3 to 11. Given to the Lord, O ye people. Mighty, given to the Lord glory and strength, given to the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Amen. Praise the Lord for his commanding authority over nature. He set up the laws that control nature. Amen. So now we see God's voice mentioned. In It's going to mention it seven times. Well, that's good and that's important. Seven is God's favorite number. There ain't no doubt about that. And、uh, so we see、uh, in verse three the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon, his,、uh, is upon many waters. And of course, we think of how, they, how Israel went through the waters in the Red Sea when Moses led them. Amen?、Uh, they could definitely see that in their history, in the things they had experienced. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. Now, cedars are one of the strongest woods ever known to exist.、Uh, there's something, too, about that cedar wood being cedar wood. It's got oil in it. And、uh, it makes it where, of course, cedar will last a long time. And isn't it usually if you want to? Make a little chest and put linens in it.、Yeah. It's made out of cedar to keep the moths away and so forth and so on. Because there's something about that cedar oil in there, man. Keeps the moths away, amen. Helps things last for a long, long, long time. And of course, the Bible speaks of how they used cedars of Lebanon when they built the temple、right. and, and made those pillars.、Uh, it's very interesting how much. The Bible speaks of the powerful giant, sort of like what our sequoias are over here in California.、Uh, the cedars of Lebanon are recognized around the world to be over there in that part of the world. Giant cedar trees that are known for their strength 
and unbreakability, and yet God, of course, can break anything. And um, so it's interesting that seven times the voice of the Lord is mentioned as the Lord is voice is said to be heard when you hear that thunder. Right. That that's the voice of the Lord shaking the earth and it can break even the cedars of Lebanon. It's one thing to, as a little child to look out and see the lightning. And it's kind of fascinating. It's almost like fireworks. But it's when you hear the thunder that makes a kid start crying. <laughs> Especially if they can feel it in their feet. Mm -hmm. <sighs> There's power, man, in the voice of the Lord. And that's what the Bible's implying here. Amen? And uh, it's powerful. It's, it's the Lord thundering with His voice. Amen. And so, amen. The Lord is thundering forth. Amen. God's voice forms the storm that demonstrates the power and majesty of His, of his authority. It's His voice that breaks the mighty cedars of great nations. His it's that causes great nations to skip like a calf and a young ox. He says, Make, He maketh them also to skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian like a young unicorn. Now again, I think of these things, because number one, I know that most of the time, and, and I've seen pictures of people raising goats in America. And they, they do raise a one-horned goat. Um, there was a fellow in the Caucasus Islands that was raising them. There's people in California now raising them. And they're just like any other little old goat. You know, we've had goats. And when they are so cute and they're little, and they, they'll just start hopping and skipping around because they got so much energy in them, you know, and they're so cute when you see them do that. Uh, you don't see it in the older ones as much as you do see the younger ones. Because you know, they just got so much energy, they want to hop and skip around, and they're so cute. Uh, and yet to think, when God speaks and God's thunder goes forward, uh, it definitely causes the shaking of the earth, and the earth quakes are like unto... Uh, even mountains skipping and moving along and changing their shape as they do when there's earthquakes. And it's very similar to the idea of uh, animals even uh, delivering their babies. He mentions the Lord's voice being over the waters course it may be a direct reference to Genesis 1 1 and 2 it may be a reference to Noah and Genesis 6 uh, for sure we can say well it was true when the children of Israel walked across the Red Sea on dry ground and, but in verse 7 the voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire well that's the three Hebrew boys here they were thrown in the fire, but yet fire burned the ropes, but didn't touch them. And then the Lord shows up and talks to them in the midst of the fire. Mm -hmm. Well, you can only uh, give an answer that it must have been the word of the Lord that divided the flames of fire. Amen? Mm -hmm. The voice of the Lord. We see, verse 8, the voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. Now, Kadesh, uh, Naphtali, is near Lebanon, way up in the north there, where there are quite a few earthquakes up there in Lebanon. You know, they had one not long ago uh, up there around Syria and in the mountains of Syria. 
And then lastly, but not leastly, verse 9, the voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to calve and discovereth the forest. Mm -hmm. Now, you can be walking along through a thick forest and then all of a sudden come to a section where a tornado came through or something and then all of a sudden all the trees are down. And it's almost like a big pasture land in the middle of a forest because the Lord's come through there and just knocked all the trees down. And... Uh, the bushes and blackberries and picker bushes have taken over. And uh, and there's something about, here's a mother calf, I mean, here's a mother cow fixing to have a calf, and here comes a big storm through. Sure enough, you can go check the barn. Most likely she's delivered because, man, something about that thunder, mother nature, something in the mama's, says, we better drop this baby and drop it now because there's something coming. <laughs> and I'm sure it would be interesting if we worked in the delivery ward of the hospital to know how many babies come into this world when there's a thunderstorm coming through. Amen? Maybe it says something to do with the change in the barometric pressure. I don't know. <laughs> but for sure the Bible's implying that when God's voice is heard and in that shaking and in that rumbling, usually if uh, Mama Cow is fixing to deliver, she's going to deliver a little early. <laughs> well, we'll have to stop right there. Amen. 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 All right. Let's all stand and pray. Father, we're so thankful for your word. We know it's true and how powerful the Lord's voice is. And we're so glad that the Bible says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And he became flesh and dwelt among us. We're so thankful for Jesus, Lord, how he was the word of God. And yet there wasn't anything made that's been made that wasn't made by him. And by him all things consist, as it says in Colossians. So we're thankful for Jesus and the great part he had in the creation of everything in this world. And that, Lord, we've been born again by him. He's our Savior. We praise you for that truth, and we pray for anybody listening to this today that they might bow the knee and make Jesus their Lord and Savior. And in Jesus' name we ask it, and amen. amen.